we want to think about the art of money-making. The Greeks have a word for it, chromatistikos. But we have to give the word a little leeway, adapt it to the current situation, because money has taken a turn. All wealth has become wealth for its own sake. There's no other kind of enormous wealth. Money has lost its narrative quality the way painting did once upon a time. Money is talking to itself. Oh, and this car, which I love, the glow of the screens, I love the screens. It's the glow of cyber capital, so radiant and seductive. I understand none of this. Does it ever stop? Does it slow down? Of course not. Why should it? It's fantastic. But you know how shameless I am in the presence of anything that calls itself an idea. The idea is time, living in the future. Look at those numbers running. Money makes time. It used to be the other way around. Clock time accelerated the rise of capitalism. People stopped thinking about eternity and they began to concentrate on hours, measurable hours, man hours, using labor more efficiently. It's cyber capital that creates the future. What is the measurement called a nanosecond? 10 to the minus ninth power. This is what? One billionth of a second. I understand none of it. But it tells me how rigorous we need to be in order to take adequate measure of the world around us. There are zeptoseconds. Good, I'm glad. The octoseconds. One septillionth of a second. Because time is a corporate asset now. It belongs to the free market system. The present is harder to find. It is being sucked out of the world to make way for the future of uncontrolled markets and huge investment potential. The future becomes insistent. And this is why something will happen soon, maybe today, to correct the acceleration of time and bring nature back to normal, more or less. You have to understand, the more visionary the idea, the more people it leaves behind. This is what the protest is all about. Visions of technology and wealth, the force of cyber capital that will send people to the gutter to wretch and die. What is the flaw of human rationality? What? It pretends not to see the horror and death at the end of the schemes it builds. This is a protest against the future. They want to hold off the future. They want to normalize it, keep it from overwhelming the present. The future is always a wholeness, a sameness. We're all tall and happy there. This is why the future fails. It can never be the cruel and happy place we want to make it. What would happen if they knew that the head of Packer Capital was in the car? We know what the anarchists have always said. Yes. Tell me. The urge to destroy is a creative urge. This is also a hallmark of capitalist thought, enforced destruction. Old industries have to be harshly eliminated, new markets have to be forcibly claimed, and old markets have to be re-exploited. Destroy the past, make the future. This is the thing about genius. Genius alters the terms of its habitat. Technology is crucial to civilization. Why? Because it helps us to make our fate. We don't need God or miracles or fly to the bumblebee, but it is also crouched and undecidable. It can go either way. We've been talking about the future being impatient, pressing upon us. That was theory. I am your chief of theory. Ideal in theory. 